it's here. Alright, so hold those lungs upright so the fluid can settle back down to the bottom. You already put it in. So listen to what 20 ml sound like. Well, now that your quick. patient is tubed, you can go ahead and drop another 20 ml of fluid the down there. Right. What does it sound like? Crackles? Crackles? All right, so quiet down for a second, right? As you're listening to lung sounds, let's consider a couple of things. We've got cardiogenic and non-cardiogenic causes of pulmonary edema. The obvious would be cardiogenic, and what would what would result in pulmonary edema from a problem with the heart? CHF or congestive heart failure. So, what about CHF is causing blood to back up inside the lungs? Left-sided heart failure, right? So, if left-sided heart, if the blood's not able to pump the rest of the body, we've got blood that's filling up inside of the capillaries. Those capillaries are going to start to bleed out into the alveoli. You've got now blood inside that alveoli, which is what's causing the crackles or the rails. What's the problem with that for our patients? They're not able to get oxygen, why? Because they're not able to get gas exchange. What position do those patients want to be in? Why? What happens when they lay flat? Exactly, they're drowning in their own fluids when they lay flat. So what we want to do is we want to sit them upright so they're not drowning in their own fluids, right? As that pulmonary edema increases, you're starting to hear uh, rails or crackles where? At the bottom of the base of the lungs because they're needing to sit upright. So as that fluid level starts to build up on those lungs, what happens to the lung sounds down at the bases? Diminished. They're diminished. Where do we hear crackles and rails? At the, bottom. at the surface level of where there's fluid and where that air is pushing through. Now, we've got diminished at the bottom, we've got crackles and rails in the mid, and then what happens when our bronchioles start to mix with fluid, or blood in this case? They start to spasm. So what kind of lung sounds might they reveal in the upper? We might get wheezing. So we get wheezing at the top, we get crackles, rails in the mid, and we get diminished or absent at the bottom, right? So now you guys come on as safe, critically thinking paramedics, and what are you gonna do to relieve the situation? You're gonna put them on CPAP. What's gonna be the biggest benefit to CPAP? You got all that positive pressure that's pushing that fluid out of the alveoli back into the capillary so we can get it back into circulation. So what's happening as this left side of the heart starts to fail? Physiologically, what else is happening inside the body? We're starting to get poor perfusion and the body and the mind realize this, so they try to compensate. How's the body gonna compensate for that? They're gonna to start to breathe faster, and what else? Jack up the blood. We're gonna jack up the blood pressure. What's jacking up the blood pressure? The backup pulse jacking up of the heart. All the backing up, and the heart's trying to keep up with that, so we get this catecholamine release of epi and norepi, increasing heart rate, increasing blood pressure. So you put them on CPAP, you get some vital signs. What kind of vital signs are we expecting to see? Rapid respirations, what else? They're hypertensive and that blood pressure is through the roof. What else? They're tacky, what else? What about their SpO2? Decreasing because we've got poor gas exchange. What about their end title? Is it going to be high or is it going to be low? I think it's going to be low because it hasn't been, they haven't been, been accessing it all the... They haven't been able to exchange, they haven't been able to move it, so it's, it's going to start to creep up, right? So now, hopefully with CPAP, we're seeing improvements in SpO2, we're seeing improvements here. With regards to waveform capnography, how do we distinguish cardiac wheezes from respiratory wheezes? The shape of the waveform, and what are we looking for with cardiac wheezes? Yeah, it's more of a normal shape. When do we see shark fin? That's when it's bronchospasm due to wheezing like asthma or COPD, good. So in this particular situation, we now gonna need to uh, reach and get more ALS with this, and what type of ALS medication are we hoping to give? Nitro, and what's nitro gonna do for this patient in this situation? We're gonna vasodilate. As we vasodilate, what else are we causing? Uh, we're, we're relaxing the heart, right? We're relaxing the vessels. We're causing it to pull open up in other places. If we're able to do that, what are we able to do for this failing heart? Slow it down. Slow it 
We're able to slow it down. We're able to decrease oxygen demand. We're able to decrease preload, which is going to thereby decrease afterload, which is there going to thereby decrease cardiac output. So we're trying to help this patient out. Now we know that nitro and CPAP both can do what? They can both increase blood pressure. They can both decrease blood pressure. So now we've got two treatments that can both decrease blood pressure. What do we need? Do we need fluids? Or do we need, you're on the right track, we need a line, right? Because in case that blood pressure drops too low, we can prop it back up. So we need a line with this as well. How often are we going to give nitro? And what are our contraindications for nitro? <laughs> Good. Is sublingual or spray the only two ways that we can give it? No. 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 How else can we do it? Paste, and we can put some paste on their chest, and it's going to be more time release for these patients. All right. Good. So um, questions with uh, with pulmonary edema. What are some causes of non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema? Toxic inhalants or superheated gases, carbon monoxide, cyanide, what else? Could be drug overdose. Yep, it could be it could be allergies, it could be poisoning, it could be allergic reaction, anaphylaxis. Basically we have could be trauma. There's cardiogenic causes, could be medications, there's non-cardiogenic causes which we just talked about. Alright, was everyone able to hear uh, Crackle's Rails in the actual situation?